Hello, everyone. GM, GM, and welcome to the Change Log this week. Jacob, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Let's let's dive into the Change Log. So the first thing to talk about is SIMD84. This SIMD, I think this one's actually super interesting. There's been uh, a basically a proposal to remove all of the rent collection within the Solana runtime because if you don't already know. Uh, originally when Solana was created, you had to pay for rent up front for all the data that you're storing on chain. And then eventually you were able to, eventually that kind of like went away and you have to, now when you create new accounts, you have to pay two years worth of rent up front. So there's just a small number of really old accounts in the ecosystem and, and on the blockchain itself that are no longer rent exempt. And they've been slowly getting, uh, rent has been collected, but as those number of accounts dwindle to less and less, there's this feature that will be able to make it so we can actually just remove that section of the code from the code base. It should be really cool. Yeah, it's really cool that it's kind of like lining up that it's been what roughly two years since rent was yeah. disabled <laughs> to where you could create non-rent exempt accounts, and now that they can finally remove this, they can. It's it's cool to see. Um, it's kind of getting to the point where. We, I would personally like to see rent changed as like what it's called because it's now it's more of a deposit and the concept of an actual rent is different. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let me know, uh, anybody Only out time will tell. in the audience, <laughs> <laughs> that if you want rent to change. Yeah. And uh, I guess related to that SIMD, there's a feature uh, that was uh, merged in. So there's a feature that it will actually disable this whenever it gets to the time where it makes sense to do so. And uh, yeah, that's that's the commit for the week. Yeah. And then we have a, another thing. So Joe out from labs now, he's doing some work on a way of doing GraphQL reads uh, via like the RPC. Uh, he's asking on Twitter, like for people to give any feedback on what his current uh, query structure is. So you can one, look at that on Twitter. And also if you want to look at actually what he's working on today on the RPC GraphQL, you can go over to the Web3.js repo and go to RPC-GraphQL, the package, and you can see everything that's going on right now under the GraphQL world. So they're kind of like building or defining a GraphQL client resolver on top of the current JSON RPC. So for those that are more used to GraphQL, they can use that instead of the JSON RPC. And also you can only request for what you want uh, back from the RPC versus all this extra information. Uh, so it's a nice little resolver built on top. So definitely if you are interested in the work that's being done on GraphQL, send Joe a comment or, or create an issue on the GitHub repository for it, or even just look in the code base. So Nick, what is this week's resource of the week? Yeah, this week's resource. I think this one's super cool. There's there's all this talk about token 22, super tokens, whatever this new token program is going to be called. Uh, and John Chinkway actually did his talk at Breakpoint, did some demo of all the capabilities that the, to the new token program has. And he actually published a, a quick start guide for confidential tokens. So the confidential token extension specifically and you can find this quick start guide within the SPL docs. And it basically is a, just a really short guide that explains how to do confidential transfers uh, with the token CLI, which I think is super cool. Right. Yeah. So this guide's pretty cool. There's one thing to note. Um, make sure that you're, you'll are you be running this on local because uh, the required mm -hmm. features to run these are not activated anywhere, like not DevNet, not TestNet. Um, so just make sure when you're doing this, run it on local. Otherwise, it will not work. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, moving on, just before we, we leave out today, uh, I just wanted to make a note. There is a large amount of developer interest on Solana. So if you are a developer that wants to get involved or contribute within the Solana ecosystem, what I'd recommend is uh, create content based off of what you're doing. If you're building a project, if you're building a game, if you're building an application, write about it as you build it. Build in public, basically. Yeah, build in public. Yeah, so if you do that, what you'll help out is onboarding even more developers onto Solana because they'll see, hey, that's a really cool game you're making or that's a really cool app you're making. And they also have a better understanding of how you're actually doing it. Uh, so build in public, create those content. Um, and if you're a new developer building on Solana today and you need any help, feel free to reach out at Solana underscore devs on Twitter. Or you can ask out on the Solana Stack Exchange and we'll be happy to help you out there. Um, but I think that's about it for this week's Solana Change Log. So thank you all for coming and we'll see you next week. See you next week. <laughs>